okay so good morning guys so today we'll be continuing with the day five session jenkins and in yesterday's session like we had uh, discussed on the basic uh, you know packaging and building right the basic concept you understood right if you see in uh, in yesterday's class right let me see let me check i uh, just recording for is jenkins in the images i think this is the image for your unit test right so as i said right see basically the unit test code is also written by the developer only so why they write it because they want to test the the code the application code which they have developed it right now and to do that to test it effectively there are a lot of test harness tools are available like java having a j unit python is having a py test similarly for the dot net there's a n unit is there these are harness tools actually j unit py test unit uh, n unit mocha and uh, jasmine these are all the harnesses tools test harness tools are there so basically this will help uh, the developer to understand like how much code coverage is been taken care by this harness tool see what do you mean by code coverage means see suppose for example whenever a developer is writing a code so whenever a developer is writing a code suppose you say that he is using a java code or java language is using for writing the code right so what usually what happen right each and every company has some kind of a standards actually they maintain a standard like for example uh, many companies what happen right they say that okay whenever you define the function you define the function always the function name uh, you know like the first character of the function name should be the capital like for example the function name what you are writing is ordering management this is some function where they were, they are writing in their code see like this their function they are writing so always they say that the first character of the function name should always be upper case okay and they will say that what are all the variables you define right define in a separate file actually right something like variables.java file in that what happened right you define all the variables here like this and also they will also verify that whatever the variables which you are defining right you should use that variables in your other in your functions or in your program suppose that you are defining some variable and you are not at all using it is it's unnecessary wastage right simply you are defining a variable but you are not using within your whole program then what is the use of defining that variable unnecessary what happened right your code size will be increased right unnecessary the uh, no the compilation and the computing will be taken care for that variable also memory allocation will happen to that variable there are many things which happens in the back end so what happened right always in every company right they always choose the best practice for developing any code or for doing development or doing developing the code they always for they always follow some best practices every industry has their own practices actually so whenever any new person any new developer he onboards right he will be told right what are the things you need to follow while coding the program or while when you are writing a code right how you have to follow it he has been told so he will follow that standard actually okay so now when he write the whole code guys actually when he writes the whole code basically to test his code whether his work code is working or not it means that he has to he has to check the code it means that suppose assume that he has used some condition he has used some condition statement suppose assume that he is using some condition statement or else he is using some function he need to verify whether the function is working or not properly whether it is trying to it is whether it is trying to uh, you know like uh, satisfy all the values whatever you are passing to that function so like that what happened right you need to even verify each and every function within your program who will do the, that verification the same developer has to do it because he has written a code he only has to verify that actually for do, verification of the entire code right what are the developer has written right so basically he will write the unit test actually unit test is a separate program it's a it's a separate code it's a separate code or we can call it as a application or program it's a separate code or application or program which the developers writes to to verify what he whatever he has written the uh, the the program right to verify whether this all this whatever the uh, program which he has written right it is work, working fine or not 
so the basic stuff whatever the program has to do you know the basic functionality whether those functions are properly working or not that is what the unit test case will do or the unit test will do okay so that's what it does actually guys so now and even the number of line code of line actually suppose i suppose assume that a developer has written 100 lines of code i'm just saying 100 lines of code is written he has written 100 lines of code for the for that particular java application he has written suppose you say that rajesh i have written the same developer has written the unit test but it is only covering to check the 50 line of code so he has written a unit test program which covers the 50 line of code it means that it is going to evaluate the out of 100 lines it is only evaluating the 50 lines of code execution or oh, it is only testing the 50 lines of that application java application what is done then there is no use of this test case actually even though that test case pass there is no use because it is not covering as much as code if you say that rajesh i am i am i have written a unit test case which covers a 95 code 95 lines of the code which you have written right ah, then i said ah, this unit test is perfectly working it means that this is the proper unit test which the developer has written right so what what happened right whenever the developer writes a unit test case he will see that whatever the unit test which i have written right how much code coverage it is checking from my application so always in the standard in the industry right, always 95% of the code has to be checked by your unit test cases maybe sometime few conditions or few checks might missed by unit test but that is fine 90% 95% of the code of the line right should be covered by the unit test case execution am i clear on this sir till here so that's what what happened that unit test cases become very important you know that whenever any developer is writing any code let it be java code let it be dot net code let it be go language let it be c c++ any language is been used right obviously developer will even write the unit test case actually that too so this uh, we call even it as a something like a, a white box testing we say if i'm not wrong so unit test is also called as a white box testing this white box testing is internally done by the developer only he will only test his code right for testing the code he has to write the unit test that's what we say actually okay so now <coughs> so guys let us see we will see a, a very simple example on suppose i have written some python code actually some python program i have written so i need uh, so i need to test it so i will basically i need to write a unit test also right so let's check like how to do how to write a simple python program and let me write a small uh, piece of unit uh, test also for to evaluate this python program okay so now what i'll do i'll go to the uh, aws console i think i already logged in to the aws console so i already having a jenkins server guys so i think yesterday i had some servers i removed it fine no problem let me quickly uh, you know like uh, launch a new instance actually so this is something like a some dummy server dummy server so i'll go with the ubuntu you can go with any linux uh, you know like um, uh, variant or linux flavor it doesn't matter ubuntu or red hat or mac or aws anything you can go i'll go with the ubuntu come over here so i'll go with the 20.0.20.04 .20 come instrument is t2.micro this is fine for me key pair is my new key pair any other thing yeah selecting the security group come over here select this one okay and what else is there nothing that's all then launch the instance okay okay let it come up guys so i'm just using some dummy server just to show you how exactly this unit test case this executes actually so after this server comes up i i have to install even the python pip everything i have to install so even we can do that also okay so python let me install the python so log into this server copy the public ip go to the downloads directory where i have put e, load it then you have something i have created on profile here so just load this and give ip address and say open okay. i'm able to log into the server directly okay so now i'll clear the screen so i don't have python so first to do a sudo apt update okay. 
Yesterday, you know that we installed the Python, right? So we use a command sudo apt install Python 2 hyphen V, something like that we used it, right? Sudo apt install Python version 2 hyphen V, hyphen Y, sorry. So I'm installing the Python 2. Okay, so Python is installed. Now I need to install the pip. So let's say sudo apt install pip hyphen y. So pip is a tool which is used for installing any kind of a dependency, any kind of a Python dependency, right? Libraries, right? Which your code requires, if your application requires. So yesterday I showed you like while uh, designing or while developing a web uh, development you are de you are developing any web website and you are using a python so obviously you'll try to go with the django framework so you need to install the django framework also so you do a pip install django right so all the dependency whatever it's needed right django everything will get installed right so now what happened guys pip is also installed let me check pip is installed or right pip hyphen v so pip is installed see pip is installed fine now what i'll do i'll do one thing let me create some directory name python demo something so python demo here what happened guys before i write a program okay i will let me write a program something simple like uh, main.py i will write so this is a python code i need not to really know the python but just i'm telling you so define add a comma b something you are defining a function and then simple you're just saying return a plus b that's all this this is simple Program you have written the Python that is main.py you have written. Save this file. Now what happened, right? You need to test it or you need to verify it. To verify it, you need to have a unit test. So before that, let me install the pi test. So I'll say pip install pi test. So pi test is a test harness tool which used to test your main program. So you have to install that package. So you could see that. It is downloaded and it is installing the PyTest. So after installing, you could see that the PyTest command is already there. See? So downloaded, downloaded, installing the package. Yeah, it has installed it actually. Successfully installed the package, PyTest actually. Now what I will do, guys, I will write a simple unit test actually. So to write a unit test, what I will do, I will just say, test underscore uh, main.py. So I need to test the main.py, right? So you are just writing, this is a unit test actually. So what you will do from import or from main, sorry, main <coughs> import add. So what you're doing that define test underscore add. You're testing, right? Testing the add function. So basically you need to assert some value to verify it. Assert add of 0 comma 0 or yeah, 0 comma 0 is equal to 0. It means that if you're adding a 0 value, if you are passing a 0 value, both A and B, right, it should return 0. Assert add 1 comma 2 is equal to 3. It means that if you're passing value 1 and 2, it should return 3. And if you're passing 0 and 0, it should return 0, right? So this is a small unit test case which you have written right from main import add and then say define test underscore add yeah and assert these two values right and i will save this actually so now guys in your python demo directory you are having these two files one is your main application and other is a unit test actually right how do you verify how you test it now if you execute the command py test py test not found the sort of App install. Why it is not found? I can't test. How did install through pip, right? Yeah. Py test. Do you see that now? See, it has passed. So it has verified the main.c program, main.py program, and this is got executed. As a part of execution of the py test, see, it is executing this test.py and you could see that it is saying that it has passed actually correct so this is a very simple way where the developer will run this tool 
test on his tool to verify whether his program is running or not properly. Right. Suppose assume that you are doing some mistake. The developer is doing some mistake, like in a main.py, right? Here, what I will do that mistakenly he will add even something like minus one and say to the file. And again, he'll run the PA test. Now you could see that it is failed. Why? Because you're right, you are asserting zero and zero, that's fine. But here, what happened that you are getting a minus one. So minus one is not equal to zero. Then your test case is getting your unit test is getting failed. So he will try to understand that oh, there is some issue with my code actually. So what I'll what the developer will do, he'll go to the main.py. Oh, he will see that oh mistakenly I had this. Okay, he'll remove that line and again he'll run the pi test. See, now it get passed. So this is a very basic uh, guys uh, example and the okay uh, where the uh, the developer will try to you know run the unit test case. Now for example, <clears throat> suppose I have a main.py. Okay, I'll do one thing guys. Let me do one thing. Let me add one more condition here. If uh, a is less than zero or p is less than zero then what you have to do that you have to get the return minus one if the value is less than zero a and b less than zero then it should return minus one now you will save this file what you have written right you have just added this condition here the program was working fine, everything is fine, but now you have added one more extra condition here. Now, if I run the py test, to say that the test case is passed, right? The unit test is passed, it says that, but do you think that this code is evaluated? Whether this piece of code is evaluated by your, PyT by your uh, unit test? No, it has not evaluated this one. Then, even still, in that case also, your py test is passed. Why? Because right here in your uh, test underscore main.py, you are just uh, verifying only these two conditions actually. So with this con two condition, what it is doing, right? It is in the main.py, it is only trying to call this function and it will, is going to check whether it is actually returning this two value. It is returning the A plus B. But whereas you have just added these two lines of code, guys, this is never evaluated. So under this case, do you think that your code has been successfully, the developer's code has been successfully tested everything? No, because right, your the complete code coverage is not done here, right? So then what you will do, okay, I got to know, okay, this, this condition is not been tested by unit test actually. Then what you will do guys, you'll open the test underscore main.py and then what happened, right? You will assert two more values. What you are asserting? Assert add of, 0 comma minus 1 is equal to equal to minus 1. Assert add of if you are passing, this is how you need to assert it actually. Here, now you save this file. Now you do a pi test. Now you could see that it will verify it. So it is not only that your unit test case should pass, uh, but the thing is that how much code coverage it is doing, the main application code, that also matters a lot actually. That's what I said earlier, right? 95% of the code should always, should be covered by your unit test case. It means that it has to check each and every code, right? So that is what even writing unit test case also matters a lot because right, uh, the developer has to see that all kind of a, like uh, conditions are met uh, by your unit test case, right? Whatever he, he writes, right? That everything, it should be, it should map for each and every function, whatever he has written inside this, inside this main application program. Correct, guys? So now, so that's all about the unit test. So yesterday I thought I will show you this example. That's what I, I just, I started with this, uh, right? Today morning, right? And now what we will do, right? We, we will try to understand like in every organization, right? You are developing a lot of projects, right? In every organization, you are developing a project, right? So for your, <clears throat> for your, uh, or who I can say, organization project, what are the main things which you need to, you need to always follow? Like, what are the main things you need to follow? For example, like how to download the dependencies correct guys how to download the dependencies it means that your application might need a lot of dependencies right 
So while building the project, right, it has to download all dependencies. That's what you needed. The second is how to build the code and what are all the tools required? What are all the tools are used or required? Always you have to make sure that this is all because this is all for the DevOps engineer, right? And the third is that how to run the unit test case, how to run the unit test and generate the unit test report. How to how to run the uh, what happened code coverage, right? Source code or code coverage, we can say how to run the code coverage and generate the report. How to run the static code analysis. How to run the static code analysis and generate the report. How to create how to create the quality gates to fail the build how to create the quality gates to fail the fail build if the code coverage or static code analysis is not acceptable okay guys so yesterday i told you right something about the quality gates right so every organization right they set up the quality gate so that they try to check that like the code coverage of their application reaches above 90 98 to 95 percent and what happened right there shouldn't be any critical errors or any kind of a critical error shouldn't come while the build process is happening so many organizations they follow but some organization are still not at following this quality gates and all right so some in some industry this could be an optional actually but majority as i said right nowadays they are set up with the quality gates actually so to set the quality gates or to work with the quality gates there is a separate tools are there a lot of tools are there in the market but the most important tool what we are is a sonar cube actually so these are tool actually these are quality gate checks tools which is there so we'll also be learning even as part of this course we'll be learning even about how to configure the sonar cube right how to set all the quality gates how to integrate the sonar cube with your jenkins everything we will be covering as part of this course okay so guys with this actually these are the best practices you need to follow the devops engineer has to follow each where each and every stuff is met right while when the CICD pipeline is running, right? He has to check all these checks. Actually, these are the pre-checks actually. So hence, what happened, guys? Now, the stuff is that actually now the the thing is come right now. What is the exactly the roles and what is the roles or responsibilities responsibilities of developer as well as the DevOps, or else what are the responsibility of developer versus the devops engineer this is a common thing which i mean which they ask actually in some industry they ask in an interview right so let me just quickly tell you what are the things right so that you will get some clear picture so let me open ms paint okay let me don't think i'll go with the net i'll try to do a, a developer clip art Okay, I'll try to choose something. Copy image. So he or she is a developer. Let me even choose some DevOps in here. So he's a DevOps in here. So he's a DevOps in here. Right. Now, what what are the roles and responsibilities where each and every like each DevOps or DevOps or developer will take care? So we will just write down those stuffs now. Right. So the 
okay what the developer does guys can anyone tell me so what he will do he will be developing the code yeah developing the code then what he will do he will try to write the unit tests correct and that he will also make sure that ensuring the ensuring the unit tests are passed locally do you agree with me guys with this ensure that he what are the unit test cases he is writing right it has to pass locally ensure the static code analysis is passed locally ensure quality gates are passed locally this is what the developer also does locally in his development environment so once he done everything once he checks oh everything is working fine then only the developer will push that code into the git rep, git repository once the code is pushed into the git repository what the devops engineer will do so the devops engineer he will what he will do guys okay point number 1 what he will do he will try to get the latest code from git or git or whatever whichever the version tool okay and what he will do he will build the code and he will run the unit tests code coverage static code analysis what else and generates the generate the reports what else he will do if any of the above fails what the devops engineer will do he will reject rejects the commit done commit done by the developer if, if any one of this fails either unit test fails or code coverage fails or static code analysis fail or anything is failed right he will try to reject it so if all the above is passed then he will accept that commit and he proceeds who he means a dev of thing he proceeds with to the next steps so guys this is what the roles and responsibility for the devops engineer this should always you should always keep in mind right what exactly the devops engineer does and what exactly the developer will do am i clear sir till here okay good okay <clears throat> now okay now what we are going to learn now so this is what the basic stuff which i want to cover on building packaging right and uh, uh, explaining about what exactly dependencies are or what is unit test right so this is what the basic so but our ultimate goal is to learn the maven tool so what we will be doing now we will be learning on how to building the java code with maven this is what we need to learn now okay so whenever any java code is developed by the developer right you need a build tool actually right so what we will do now actually let us see that let us see a small example of how to write a simple java code and how exactly you can compile and how you can execute that we will just see okay so before i start getting with maven right let us first see how exactly we write a code so i'll be not be writing a code actually basically i will i'll go into the net and i will just say a uh, simple uh, hello world java program just i will do like this so so what it is there guys so this is i can go with any site actually so i'll go with this site and uh, let me see see do you have simple program this is your uh, java hello world program so let me copy this so i'll come over here and let me come out from that here and i'll do one thing guys i will create on new directory by name java demo so i'll get into the java demo and i will just write some like main dot java file and i will paste this program this is a simple hello world java program right you need not to know the coding i'm just telling you okay so i'll save this program 
Oh, guys, I need to install. Uh, sorry, I need to compile the Java program. So I need a. I need a. I need a Java compiler, or I need a Java to be installed. So let me check whether Java is there in my machine. I don't think the Java is there in my machine, guys. So I need to install the Java. So how to install the Java? You know that sudo apt install. I need to minimum install Open JDK 11. Open JDK 11 hyphen JDK hyphen Y. So I need to install the Java first. So let me install the Java. So this and all we have already covered, right? In the first session only, first order day two session, right? I have shown explain you about what how exactly you need to install the Java, right? So I'm using this command: sudo apt install open JDK hyphen 11 hyphen JDK hyphen Y, right? So you know always. Note down all these commands, right? To install the package, so it is installing the Java package. So I have just written a small main dot Java, and I need to compile it. So to compile it, the Java should be installed in your machine. Okay. So it is installing Java. Yes, it has installed it. Verified Java hyphen version. See, the Java hyphen version. See, Open JDK version 11 is installed. Yeah. Always when you are installing Java, guys, always install above the version 8. So version 8 need uh, earlier what happened? People used to use Open JDK version 8. Nowadays, like people are going with a very higher version. You can go with 11. You can go with 13. You can go with 17. You can even go with 19 also. Open JDK 11 and 19 is also available. You can install that also. That's the latest Java available actually, right? So now, so after installing a Java, now if I let me do a Control C. So what is the command, guys, which I use to install the Java? So this is the command I use, and I use the right. This is the command I. So these are the two commands. So let me do a history command so that you'll get to know history, and let me copy these two commands. So I need to install these packages. Okay, guys. Now, <clears throat> now what I have to do that I need to compile the code, right? To compile the code, there is a command by name Java C. Java C. Java C space main dot Java. So Java C is a compiler, right? If you execute Java C compiler, can you see that there is a file by name world class? Hello world. Dot class file is created. Basically, dot class file is created, guys. Right. To run this program, to run this class file, you have to just say Java hello world. Enter. See your program get executed. This is how you need to compile and run your program. Okay. Before that, you have to create the main dot Java and the content of the main dot Java is. This is a simple program, right? Your first level program, right? So this is what it is. Okay. After that, you need to compile and you need to run the program. Now, this is very simple code, guys. Where I have written a single file, I'm compiling it, right? And also, you can even create a Java archive. So you you know that Java has like a lot of different extension. You can create a jar. You can create a var. You can create an er, right? Similarly, what happened, right? You want to create a jar. Means, see, you are having a jar. If you want to create a jar, you can use a jar. Jar command, cf, right? Something. Uh, hello world. Dot jar. Dot jar, and specify your class file. Enter. See, it has created the jar file. So this is the command to create a jar file. Usually, right? What happened, right? Uh, suppose you are having a lot of dot class files are there. Here there is only one dot class files are there. Suppose you know that there are ten dot class files are there. You need to create an archive, or you need to create a jar. Jar means Java archive. Jar means Java archive. You need to create a jar means you will use this command to create a Java. So you will say jar cf specify some jar name and specify all the class files whatever you are having. Some ten class files are there. Provide all those ten class files. Finally, it will create a jar file. So in this jar file. will have the archive of all the class files correct so this is the 
command to create a Java. So usually whenever the developer, he develops the code and give to you, right? He will give the file to you, to the DevOps channel, either the jar file or the var file or the er file. Later, you will run the same program. You will run the jar file, the same program. Correct, guys? Now, one question to use that actually is this is the simple way where the Java developer will do all this activity and finally he gives the jar or he will give the dot class file to the to the testing engine or to the DevOps engine. Do you think that uh, the, the Java developer or any developer, right, he, they will write only few files or they will write such a simple file and do it? No, right? In the real time project side, right, they will be writing a lot of dot Java files, main dot Java, test dot Java, ordering management dot Java send java there are a lot of java programs where the developer will write it's not only single file guys it's not only single program which you'll be writing you'll be writing multiple files hundreds of files the java developer will be writing and it's not only one java developer will be right will be work coding it there are many developers in his team right they will be working on the same project so they'll tend to write a lot of projects so do you think that each and every file need to be compiled separately and it has to be integrated finally it is very difficult process you cannot do like that Hence, what happened, right? So, hence, what happened, right? There is an organization by the name Apache. Apache organization, Apache Foundation. Apache uh, Foundation, actually. So, those foundation, those organization, right? They initially came with, with uh, one tool, one the Ant tool, actually. Ant is a, uh, the first most tool which, uh, you know, like, uh, which reduce the, uh, you know, uh, which reduce the difficulties for compiling many programs at a time. If you are, it's not only one Java file, dot Java file, you are having multiple Java files. You can easily compile, manage all those Java files and create one, only one single jar file with the help of an ant tool. Clear guys? Uh, one second guys, I'm just getting one call. Okay, sorry guys. I uh, okay. So, so, so in that case, what happened, right? So this Apache Software Foundation, right? They came up with this ant tool. They developed this ant tool actually. Okay. So, so let me write it down some notes, guys, for this. So ant tool is used. So let me write down the notes so that you will be understanding. So building the Java code is building a Java code is is nothing but is executing the dot java files correct with something like you will be using some commands like java c and specify the dot java file name like this you will give right so this is how you are compiling the java program and uh, and it will create the dot class file dot class file do you agree with me so and later once you are created doc dot uh, class file how to run that now you to run the application or to run the execution or to run the application you need to execute the code with the help of something like java space specify that path to that class file name like this you have to run this like this so usually what happened right in the companies basically in the enterprise project suppose anyone is developing the enterprise uh, software projects actually we will have multiple java files correct guys it's not one file, multiple Java files. So building each file to generate the dot class file and then combining all the dot class files uh, to build, uh, what do you call, to build a jar, dot jar file format is difficult right it's this is the challenging task where the developer is to face earlier 
So to overcome that only, what happened, right? The Apache Ant, the Apache company, they came up with the Apache Ant, was the first, uh, I can say it, a famous tool actually, famous tool which helped in building the Java code or the Java Enterprise Java project actually, right? So Ant build files. So how to write a build file? I'll show you now a small example. Ant build files are written in XML format and always the file name uh, will be build.xml like this. The always the file name will be build.xml file. Okay, guys. So, so binary is a format that is packed version of the code. It so it can be a jar or var or er extension. Okay. But with that, once you are running, once you've written the build.xml file, so this build.xml is nothing but you are, when you're following an ant, right? You have, if you you need to first install the ant tool. And after that, you need to write a build.xml file. In that build.xml file, you have mentioned everything, how to compile the whole project, actually. So this was initially, this was a very famous tool, actually, which was earlier, which was developed by the Apache Software Foundation. OK. Now, guys, let's see now. For example, I have the same Java program. So I'm having the same main.java, hello world Java, right? everything is there, actually. So what I will do, right? So. I need to first install the ant tool. Let me check whether the ant is there or not. See, nowadays ant is nobody's using. Ant tool was earlier used by uh, like seven, eight years back. People are using ant. Even some, still some companies are using ant because if they know that you are having only single uh, application, Java application, and you're not developing any other, or your application not depend upon any other application, then people, instead of going with the Maven, right, they'll go, to, go with ant. Even in our company also, there are some applications are there. Right, they what the developer has did right. They have give, they have given the ant build tool or they're building to the ant only. So what they will do right once they give that code to us right, like to our team right. They'll also give the build instruction how to build it. So basically, you have to run an ant command to build that to 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 build that uh, program Java program. So still many companies yeah they are using ant, but if you are seeing the enterprise uh, you know projects right in many companies where you know people are developing huge projects like e-commerce projects or else like uh, medical. Uh, transcription project or you know like uh, or else uh, any payroll projects right so they it's not one file they write they allow they'll have they'll write multiple thousands of java files they write right so to manage all those things it is difficult actually so hence what happened right they go initially they went for the ant but ant had a lot of limitations so then what happened that then the new maven tool came into the picture actually right so now i need to install the ant so i'll just say sudo app install ant hyphen y I'm just installing the ant, okay? So ant package is installed. So I'll just say ant hyphen hyphen version. Guys, you need not to install ant and all because I said nobody is using. So ant is there. Java hyphen, sorry, ant hyphen version or ant hyphen v. Ant is already installed actually. Okay, ant is there actually. So now what I will do guys, actually, now I will write a simple build.xml file. Just see how I'm writing, right? I'll just, write with the same name you need to write whenever you're writing you know you want to uh, build the application or uh, your java through the ant right you need to always write a, a build.xml file actually right okay what is it xml version version is equal to 1.0 And then you are having something with the project name is equal to hello world. And then just say default equal to none or default equal to info. Okay. And then we have something as a target. So let me close this target. Yeah. 
Inside that, I will be writing. So what I will do here, I'll just say uh, target uh, name is equal to something info. And here I need to mention that, sorry, I think I missed it here. So I'll just say echo. Hello world. Or something, any message, welcome to Ant. And then say, After this, close this with dash project. That's all, guys. This is a simple ant uh, build.xml file which you have written. Right? I will save this file. Let me check, verify everything is perfectly fine. Okay, this question mark is closed here. Okay, XML version is 1.0. Project name is equal to hello world, default is equal to. Okay, fine. Target name is equal to info, fine. And then hello world, welcome to Ant. Okay, slash for fine closing this target with the slash target, closing this project with the slash project. It's correct, actually. Now, what I will do, guys, I'll just uh, you have a build.xml file. Now you need to run an Ant command. So, what Ant will do, Ant will try to look into the file known as a build.xml in the present directory and it will compile the whole project. See, it will compile, it will build the project like this. The Ant will work actually. So Ant is also used uh, for building the projects actually. But what happened, right? Ant has a lot of limitation actually. What is one of the biggest limitation of the Ant tool is actually that. See, because what happened, right? Slowly what happened, a lot of open source projects started coming up in the market, right? You know, right? A lot of projects started coming in the market. Then what happened, right? A lot of dependency libraries were required by each and every Java program, right? Like whenever the developer is writing any program, right? Yesterday, I think I told you already that. There is something like a spring framework right this spring framework is started heavily used by the java developer now what happened right it it means that if i want to integrate this spring in my java code actually i need all kind of a spring dependency or the libraries required it means that i need everything so what happened right ant was failed to it failed to uh you know like uh it failed to uh, download the dependencies required by your Java application. So this was a major advantage, guys. You cannot, uh, you know, like you cannot use the Ant tool, uh, you know, like basically for uh, working on a very large projects actually, because the large projects it requires heavily. It is depend upon a lot of libraries, lot of repository. It is depend upon. Hence, Ant fails over there. So that's the reason what happened, right? Slowly what happened to the same community, Apache Software Foundation, right? They came with the Maven tool, actually. Maven build a tool, actually. Maven build tool will resolve all these issues, whatever you are seeing in the Ant tool, actually. It will try to download all kind of dependencies, whatever it is needed, everything the Maven tool does, actually. So guys, sorry, one more thing, guys, one more time. I'm getting a call. Hold a second. Sorry guys, okay, now, so, so this is how guys actually that uh, like uh, the build.xml file you need to write. Suppose if you go to the net actually, and if you just say, um, hello world uh, and uh, hello world and build actually, you could see that you'll get a tutorial on hello world with apache ant actually see if you come down see this is your main program actually the hello world program right this is your java program and you could see that earlier used to follow a traditional way of building you are calling the java c and you are calling the and you are building the program 
Later, what happened, right? The same thing, what happened, right? They started writing a build.xml file. If you want to use an ant tool, then you need to write a build.xml file. See, in this build, what happened, right? See, it starts with the project and it ends in the project. And here you are having various targets you're having. See, you're having various targets. Now, once you have written the build.xml file, if you're doing an ant compile, what you're doing for the ant, you're saying that specifying the compile as a as a target. So what the ant will do, it will try to refer to this build.xml file. Wherever the compile target is there, no, it will try to do it. What the compile will do, oh, from the source directory, whatever is there, it try to compile the whole code. Okay, fine. After that, you're having ant jar, build the jar file. So here you could see that target name is jar. Oh, what is a jar means actually, basically you are creating a jar file or a var file. Okay, and after that, you could see that you want to run that, the program you can do a and run and you could see that so this target run is getting executed see it is actually running the jar file see java jar and specify the jar file name so this is what guys earlier people used to write the build.xml file this also was a very tedious task by the developer because the developer himself has to write the build.xml file and he need to run all these commands so religiously earlier long back like 10 years back people were writing the build.xml file and it was it got, it reduced a little bit complexity for building up the application. But later, as I said, that when the open source project started coming up heavily, right? So ant couldn't suffice because whatever the dependency we need, right? The ant was not able to download all those dependencies. Hence, what happened, right? We came up with the Maven tool actually. So, so what I say that Maven is a software. Project management. Maven is a software manager project management tool, we say. So which is going to uh, like uh, does the build. It also even does the dependency management. It's a dependency management tool, we can say. OK, so basically Maven is basically it is based on the concept known as a POM. So Maven is based on the concept of project object model. We call it as a POM. What is this? We will see later. Don't worry now. So what is a project object model? So it is based on the concept of project or model, model we say. So what are the things where the Maven provides? So Maven provides, it does the building, it does the build of the code, it does the test also. It also does the reports. It also does some kind of a documentation. And also Maven also does the releases. Right? These are the things where the Maven provides actually for you. Okay? And Maven is based on the POM file. It means that basically whenever you are writing any Java code, right? There you need to create a file by name POM.xml file. So here also, here also, the format is .xml, right? So whenever any code is being developed by the Java, he has to even write a pom.xml file. So there is a saying actually in a Maven that, guys, this is very important. Just listen carefully. Maven actually follows convention over configuration. This is what in official Maven document also. So I found uh, this uh, statement from the Maven documentation, guys. So what Maven says that Maven strictly follows convention over configuration, actually. See, what do you mean by convention over configuration? Means, see, whenever you are trying to have your Java code and you want to build it, you know that you have to use the ant tool to build earlier, right? So ant tool, what happened? It was strictly behaving or it was strictly following of building of this dot build.xml file. So the Java developer has to write this build.xml file, right? He need to learn, understand even how to write this XML file and all, right? And what happened, right? There is no convention here is followed. You can write, you can have as many number of class files, as many number of, you know, like test files, anything can place and you can write a single build.xml file to build it actually. But what happened, right? As I said, right, Ant was never used to download any kind of a dependencies. There it got failed actually. So that's the reason Maven came to the picture, but Maven, is something like it says that it follows the convention rather than configuration. It says that don't worry about the configuration. Like how 
ant is worried about the build.xml file. Maven says that don't worry about the configuration, man. First, uh, initially, I want the convention. It says that first you follow the convention, what is that? Then you see the configuration. That's what Maven says. So, what is the what exactly is the convention? Like, for example, like for example, if you are writing a source code of your program, right? Like, let me write it down like this, something like if you're writing a score source code actually where you need to place the source code actually the source code you need to the the path where it has to be right something like dollar of uh, something like base dir the base dir is something like your base directory like for example here you have written a java program uh, and where you have written guys inside the java demo directory but this java demo directory it is there inside this path right so this is that this whole path uh, is nothing but your base dir in this case for example i'm just saying for example base dir in our case is equal to this path actually so it means okay this is a base directory where your program will be placed or where the developer will place all his java code programs okay so what is the convention you need to follow is that actually the source code where you need to keep all the dot java files under the base dir under this base dir guys he has to create one directory by name src under src he has to create a directory by name java main under main he has to create a java directory under that he need to place all the dot java files he has to place under this path so all the dot java files need to be placed under this path like this this is what the convention you need to follow oh it means that rajesh under this Java demo, do I have to create an SRC directory? Under SRC directory, do I have to create a main directory? Under main, I have to create a Java directory. And under this Java, I need to keep all the files. Yes, sir. You have to follow this convention. This is the convention where Maven said that for any project which you build in Java guides, and you need to build that Java code using the Maven tool, Maven says that you please follow this convention. OK, fine. and. Uh, Apart from this code, guys, you will be writing uh, the Java developer will be even uh, writing a lot of resources, actually, you see. So the question comes now where I need to place all these resources when if I am following the convention. So same thing, base DAR, the same base directory, wherever your Java code is there, under there, you need to create an SRC directory. Under that, already you have an SRC directory. Okay, under that, there is a main directory. Under that, you need to create some resource directory. Under that, you need to place all those resources. What is it? I will tell you later. All these resources should be placed under this path. This is the convention you need to follow. Okay, fine. After the developer has written all Java code, he has to even write the unit test cases also, right? The unit test also you need to write, right? So where exactly the unit test he will writing? The unit test he will be writing. So he will be writing the unit test case. So what is the path for this? Same thing. Base DAR. Under that, you have a SRC directory. Under that, there is a directory when test has to be created. Under that, he will place all his unit test codes. He will place it under this path. OK, good. After you have written, you have compiled the whole code. You have compiled the whole code, compiled byte code. After you did it, you compiled the whole byte code. Where, by default, the compiled code go and sit in your project directory. So what is the convention? So under base DAR, under that, there is something was it will create a directory by name target. Under the target, guys, it will create all your class files. It will create a it will create a directory by name class. Under this class, all the dot class files will get created. Like for example, here you could see that uh, hello world dot class, right? This is the executable file, right? This is executable file. Right? You might ask uh, under the Maven project, Rajesh, where it will go and sit? It will go and sit here, man. Under the base directory, it, uh, it will by default it will create a target directory. Under the target directory, it will create a class directory. Under the class, it will keep this hello world dot class here. Actually, so by default, the Maven does all these things. Actually, so this is the kind of a convention. And similarly, what happened, right? You, if you want to have a distributable, distributable code with what format you need? Either you need a jar, or either you need a var, or either you need a er. These are the format you need, right? These are the execution format you need. Where it will keep? So the execution form again, again, base dir. Under that, under you have a target. So under this target, the jar or the var file, 
will get created. So once you are compiling the whole code, right, and you are creating a Java var or here, right, that will be created under this path actually. Under this path, it will get created. So guys, this is what the convention the Maven follows. Am I clear on this until here? We'll see an example. I will show you this example so that you will clearly understand what I'm trying to tell you. Is it clear till here? Guys, any doubts you have till here? Amit, Gopal, Naresh, Kishore, are you following? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Easy, right? It is easy to understand, right? Yes, sir. So you need to yes, only sir. follow a convention. Now you will say that Rajesh, do you have to know, know all these things, man? Yeah, you should know, man, because <laughs> as a DevOps engineer, you are building a Java code. You need to even understand the structure of how exactly the developer is placing all his Java codes, everything, and this is the structure he's following, actually. Suppose in your company, you have to only build and only release the Java application only, then you need to learn, man. There's no option. You need to know. It, this will help you a lot to understand in a better way. That's what the DevOps engineer also He'll also know a little bit about the architecture of the whole application or the whole project. He understands oh, how exactly the project works in the real time. So this is what the convention you need to follow, guys. Now, guys, now you say that Rajesh, you are having this hello world. You are having this main.java. Now what you say that now, Rajesh, you try to create or you try to create a demo for me where you, you need to build the whole code with the Maven tool, actually. Okay, fine, good. So let me come out from the Java demo. Let me create one more directory by the Maven demo. This time we will see the Maven demo. Okay. So I create a Maven demo. So guys, what is this Maven demo? This Maven demo is a base DAR. According to the, me, according to this, the base directory is nothing but in this case, it is a Java, sorry, Maven demo. So this is my base DR, correct? The base DR in this example is nothing but your this part. Okay, fine. What he says, uh, Rajesh, create a SRC directory. Okay, fine. Let me create a SRC directory. Okay, I create a SRC directory here. Fine. What else you have? You create a, under SRC, go to the SRC. Under that SRC, create a main. Okay, fine. I, I'm following just what is there. Oh, under the main, oh, create a, uh, what you, create a Java directory. Okay, Java directory. Under this Java directory, what you say that? Oh, create a, what about Java, dot Java file? Oh, let me do thing. Let me write the same main dot Java file. And here, what happened, right? Same hello world program is there, right? I'll just copy paste from here. Okay, man. Now I have this. Oh, it means that. Oh, this is the complete path, man, which you are following. Oh, under Maven, you have to create SRC main Java. Under that, you are having a main.c. Very good, man. Yes, this is what I needed, actually. Now, guys, you know very well that actually, right? Whenever I am writing a Whenever I want to build a project to the Maven, you need a pom.xml file because the Maven is based on the concept of the project object model, which is nothing but the pom actually. So what you'll do here, come over here, and always the pom file, pom.xml should always be under this base DR. It means that wherever you're sitting here, right, under this, the pom.xml file should be there. So location of the pom, location of pom.xml, is always the base DR. It means that under slash home Ubuntu Maven demo, in my case, here you need to copy or you need to create a form.xml file. Right? So what I will do, I'll go over here, I will come out from 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 here, and I'll say SRC. You see, here, wherever you are finding the SRC, right? So you are under the base DR now, right? So here, Rajesh, I need to create a form.xml file. Okay, let me do a touch of form.xml file. Okay, now I have a form.xml file. Now, what is the content, Rajesh? What is the form.xml? What I need to follow to write a form.xml file? Don't worry, just go to the net and simply just type in your Google form.xml. That's all. Don't worry much. Okay, form. This form is a project object model, is a fundamental unit of the work in Maven. It is an XML file that contains information about the project and configuration. Oh, he's saying something. And you see that there's an official site, you know, maven.apache.org. Oh, this is an official website, man. Okay, let me go to this website. So he has given, you read all these things. See, he says that, see, example is the build directory, the target, and source directory, which is always SRC, main, Java. Ah, oh, whatever Rajesh is saying. Oh, he might have read this document. Ah, I have read this document. Then only I'm saying. 
Oh, where is the test directory? Oh, test is a SRC test. Oh, whatever Rajesh is saying, test, right? You will test, it will always be then the test. Oh, he is actually for this document. Fine, man. What is the super form? We will see it tomorrow in the next class. Okay, what is the minimal form? This is a minimal form. This is a very, very, very basic minimum form is there. Oh, shall I copy this? Uh, just please go ahead and copy this. Copy this minimal dot form. This is a minimal dot form. Under the minimal dot form, you have a project, which is a root. You are having a model version. You are having a group ID. You are having an artifact ID, ID and you are having a version. <coughs> this is a basic, guys, which you have to know. That's all. Do you have to know any other thing? No. Only this basic only you have to understand. Copy it. Come over here. Open that form.xml file. Just blindly paste it. Are you feeling any difficulty, guys? Till here? Is it too difficult? No, right? It is simple. You just uh, you are believing on the internet. <laughs> you are going there and doing whatever I am telling you. Okay, uh, let me do this. Let me remove the space here. Okay. Now this is a simple. Uh, what happened? This is your simple uh, uh, form.xml file actually. Right now, guys, what happened right here? You are having something with a model version. This model version is about the Maven version, actually. Okay, fine. And after that, you are having something like a group ID. What is a group ID? It is nothing but your company ID or the information about the company. Like, for example, my company is, you know, like my uh, site, uh, my uh, channel name is Rajesh Hyphen DevOps. I'll do one thing, something like this com dot, I'll give something Rajesh Hyphen DevOps. Right? Like this, I'm giving the company name. Now, what is the application name which you are developing? You are developing the hello world, right? Okay, I'll do one thing. I'll just write a hello world. Hello something hyphen world. Right? What is the version you need to provide? You can give any version like 1.0, 1.1. Like I will give 1.0. You see that always whenever any project is developed by the developer, right? You could see they'll be having an extension as a something as a snapshot. You might come across with this very much commonly snapshot means that application whatever you have building right that is still not stable it is still under development or it still has it is not stable that's or it is not a release version so that's what always whenever you see jar file which is having this snapshot means it says that the jar file or the java program the compiled one it is still not stable it is still under development so always you will see this snapshot so let me add this extension on the snapshot actually right that's all guys and then save this file okay save this file now here guys once you are having this whole source code and once you are having so under src main java you are having main.java there i have mentioned my what you have mentioned you have mentioned the hello.world program right this hello world dot you have just copy pasted it same thing right and here outside you have mentioned or you have created a form.xml file correct now, what is needed for you to compile the program? You need to install the Maven. So, what is the guys? You need to install the Maven. Okay, you have to install the Maven. Installing the Maven, there are two types actually. Basically, there are two types for installing the Maven tool. You can install the Maven tool either with a sudo apt install Maven like this. You can say you can install directly like this or else the second most important is that you need to. This is the first method guys to install the Maven tool. The second method of installing the same Maven tool is that actually you can download the tar. From the official site. Download the tar means download the tar means download the map Apache Maven tar Apache Maven tar you need to download. That is a that is but you are trying to download the whole code everything the Maven tar itself you have to download from the official site and place it to some location and set the path information. This is the second method. Most of the times, the organization or the companies are following this method. So, how to do that? Go to the net, the same site in the Maven. Can you come down? If you come a little bit, come down. Uh, here it is not there. You could see that there's something like a download. Where is it? Download. Yeah, here you could see there's a download. Click on here. 
see you could see that for maven to install guys you should already have a java to be installed that's the prerequisite maven always depend upon the java that's what maven uh, whenever maven has to give me java should be there always and if you come down see this is the source binary see and what is the version which you are having in the maven is 3.8.7 the latest version what you are having available maven is 3.8.7 so in your organization if they say that rajesh go and try to download the maven 3.8.7 and install it oh, okay you can download this tarball guys and you can place the tarball and extract it place the tarball and do some say, kind of a system testing and uh, sorry do some kind of a system setting and then you just uh, export that and you will get the information about your maven it means that you will get the maven commands so either you can go with this second method as i said or either you can go with the first method only so for the first method what i will do here so what i will do guys i will try to go with this first method of installing the maven in this dummy server so this is a dummy server whereas i have a jenkins server here right then in the jenkins server while installing the maven i will try to go with i will try to follow the second method is it fine so just to show you how maven works i will go with this first method so what i will do here guys i'll just say sudo sudo uh, apt cache search maven first check whether the maven is there or not so you could see that oh maven is there okay maven is a java software project management and, and a comprehensive tool it says okay you can install through maven here suppose you need to check uh, rajesh this is fine it is showing maven but what is the version of maven which it will get installed while installing if you are installing sudo apt uh, get install maven hyphen y right if you are if you are installing like this you might ask me what is the version it is actually installing or you can even check man what version it is installing how to check that sudo at cache madison maven Oh, as part of the installation of Maven, it is actually installing 3.6.3. Okay. But Rajesh, if you go to this site uh, where you are saying, here you are having 3.8.7. But here it is 3.6.3. Oh, this is a quite older version, right, which is getting installed. And where this installation, where this package is, it, this package is there in, in some repository, man. From this repository, your app will try to download and install it. Okay. Rajesh, but I need 3.8.7. No, I want the latest version. Oh man, that is already not been built as a package, man. You will not get through package management. Then what I have to do? You have to go and download this and enter it manually. So this is what, guys, sometime what happened, right? I will tell you why we are doing this follow. Because in many organizations, in many projects, right? What happened, right? The developer will develop the code, will develop the Java code. Please listen carefully this. He will develop the Java code. Or he will develop the Java application. And what he'll be doing, no, he will be using some kind of a Maven version to build this application. He will use the Maven. Here it is are having 3.3. .3. Suppose assume that he is using 3.2, very older version of Maven he's using, actually, very older version he's using. But he's compiling the whole Java code by using the Maven 3.2 version. Right? And he will compile the whole Java codes. What are the Java applications is there? The enterprise application there, it will get compiled. Fine. Now what happened, right? After that, what happened, guys? He will push all the code, everything into the source code repository. So what the developer will do, he will put the entire code into the Git repository, correct? Into the Git, he will push. Now, after pushing the code, what the developer will tell to the DevOps engineer, you know? He will tell to the DevOps engineer, hey, man, while building this code, while pulling and building the code, please make sure that do you have you have installed the 3.2 only. Don't go with the latest. He will. The developer will tell if you go with the latest uh, 3.6 or 3.8, right? Maybe my my Java program might not compile properly. It might throw an error because my Java program is compatible with this Maven 3.2 version only. Please install this Maven 3.2 in your in your pipeline. While pipeline, when you're writing a pipeline, you make sure that you use this 3.2 version only. So what the DevOps team will do, guys? He is following the instruction from the developer and is trying to install this version only. So to install this version. You need to download a tar file. You cannot download, you cannot install through sudo apt install uh, maven 3.2. You cannot do like that. You understood? Why you have to follow the second method? Because in every industry, in every project, they are using a different maven version. You need to follow what the developer is doing. Whatever the developer version, the maven is using, you know, same version you should have in your test environment or in while well, installing it while uh, uh, 
running the CI/CD pipeline, right? The same Maven tool you need to configure the build server into configure with the same version. Am I clear on this sir, till here? It means that you need to download the tarball for the Maven 3.2, extract the tarball and install it and set the path. Everything you need to do it for 3.2. If the Java developer say, no man, I'm immaterial. Okay, uh, you can install any uh, Maven uh, version, man. It is immaterial. My code will get successfully uh, compiled means you can go ahead with anything, right? But usually what happened, right? Always the developer will always stress to the DevOps engineer that, hey, you please go and install with that particular version only. Don't go with any other version. He'll always stress uh, to the DevOps engineer. This I've seen commonly in our company also. I've seen it very commonly. They are go with only particular version only. So is it clear, guys? I hope that, guys, you are understanding what I'm trying to tell you. I know that it is little uh, difficult or little tricky today, whatever I'm saying, but this is how you have to learn. There's no other way. Okay. So what we will do now, we will try to install whatever the existing Maven is there now. Okay. I'm, I'm not going with some particular version. I'm installing whatever it is provided. So what I'll do, I'll just say sudo at install Maven hyphen Y. This is the first method I'm installing it actually. See, Maven is installed. How to verify whether the Maven is installed on? You have to say Maven hyphen fn version. This is a command you have to install. See, it says that Maven 3.6.3 .3 is installed. So, what is the command, guys? You choose to install. These are the commands you choose, actually. These are the commands you executed. For installing the Maven as a first method, you followed this instruction. Any doubt here till you have you have any doubts or everything is clear? Sir, actually, sir, I am Kishore, sir. Hmm. Hello. Go ahead. Sir, in the real time we will create so we will create source code in local repository or uh, hmm. in the uh, Jenkins in the local mission, sir. Sir, now that's what now what happened now? Yesterday, what I said when I am explaining about the git cloning, if you are if you return a CD, CLCD pipeline, you are running it. Where the code will get, uh, where the code will get uh, downloaded from the gate, it will get downloaded to the workspace. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Actually, now yeah. we are creating the source code target files in local mm -hmm. machine, no, sir. Yeah, local machine Jenkins server only. In the uh, Jenkins uh, server only, you can install the build tool, or else you can set up a separate server where you can configure the build server. Actually, the developer will create source code in his system. After that, he will push the source code in GitHub repository, no, sir? Correct. Right. From there, we'll try From to download we will it. will directly download into workspace. Yeah. yeah. We'll try to clone that uh, whole project from the Git to your Jenkins server. And where yeah. it will come and clone, it will go and come and clone in. It will come and sit in the workspace directory. Yeah, yeah. Actually, but now we are creating the SRC main file and all in local ah, in Jenkins. This is, a, just a, this is what happened now, man. This... Uh, I'm doing everything in my dummy server here. I'm not yet gone through the Jenkins server. In Jenkins server, I'll show you. Okay, okay. I'm just showing you locally how I'm doing it manually here. I have not yet, see, for showing you here, I should configure everything Maven here also, right? Okay. I need to do, I need to write a pipeline to do the code put it That I will do later, don't worry. Okay. If, here, what I'm doing now, everything, I'm sh showing you manually how things happen in a standalone machine only now. Okay. But this yeah. work is not ours, no, sir, actually. No, no, you have to understand this, whatever I'm telling you. Yes. See, this is a basic foundation which I'm giving. Later, when you start working on the Jenkins and all, there also you need to set the build server, you have to install the Maven, and you should know that while code pulling, right? And you need to follow some commands also. You need to follow all this instruction, man. So uh, this, I'm, I'm, yes, yeah. this I'm showing you an example. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Installing Maven is, is our duty, but uh, we, are, yes. we are creating source code and uh, all things we are creating, no, sir. This that I'm showing you an example that how I'm creating the source code. See, I'm just following the convention. That's what I said. See, I'm just showing you like how exactly we're building. See, palm.xm also, we don't build it. The palm.xm <laughs> also is built by the developer only. But I'm yes, showing sir, how sir. things works actually. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, Got sir. it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Good. Now what happened is you have you have a palm.xml file. Good. You have a palm.xml file. Good. You have an SRC, good. Now what happened, guys? You have also installed the Maven also, and we verified Maven version. Okay, Rajesh, 
maven is installed now now i guys i need to run a command what is the command you need to run sitting under the same base dir this is a base dir you have to run a command mvn compile simple and to enter so what mvn will do it will try to download all dependencies see it will try to download all dependencies see it will download all the dependencies see and it will build it uh, by why it is failing guys compilation error ensure that what is it why it is failing uh, okay source code option version is no longer supported use 6 or later target is 1.5 oh no longer supported but use 1.6 version okay <coughs> okay it is waiting guys uh, okay this should not fail actually uh, the phoenix option to switch the debugging mode actually okay Hold a second, guys. Let me check. Uh, Maven, Java, Maven, form dot XML. Hmm. What it is throwing error? Yeah. Okay. So you are getting this error. Correct. So okay. Here you could see that in the Maven in the pom.xml file, you are having something like this Maven compiler source target and all. Okay, so I try to add this pond okay, but still it is getting error. Okay, he is saying this one actually. Yeah, this is what it is helped actually. Okay, I'll copy this. Okay, this is a new thing, guys, which they have altered in the Maven actually. So I'll open that pond.xml file. Okay, so what I will do that here I will add that uh, dependencies actually. So here, what I will do, I'll just copy paste this actually. Okay, I'll copy paste it. Here, what happened, right? I will give, I will change the version as 11 actually. Come <clears throat> uh, over here. I'll just try to arrange this actually. Okay, arrange this. Okay, properties, property, yeah. I will share this file. Now I will run a uh, NVN compile. Let's see. I think it will build now. Yeah, it has built successfully now. See, it has built successfully now. Now, where it has built, uh, where it has placed the dot class file, you could see that under slash home Ubuntu Maven, under that it has created a directory by name target. See, earlier the target was not there. Only these two were there. Now you could see the target has created. Under the target, you could see that it has created the class file. Under the class file, you could see that it has created the hello world class. See, whatever the main.java program which you have written, mentioned in the right, it has compiled here and it has kept here. It means that the dot class file, it has kept here, guys. Correct? Guys, do you agree with me here? Now, you say that, okay, fine, good, uh, Rajesh. It means that when I'm doing an MVN compile, see here. Again, I'll do, sorry. I'll do here, go here. And when I'm doing MVN compile, what MVN compile will do, MVN is a command and compile is a goal or we call it a target actually. Basically, we call this a goal actually. We will discuss later about in the next session, like what are the goals are there like that. Maven goals are there. You know, if I do an MVN compile, what MVN will do, MVN will try to download all dependencies, whatever is required for your building the Java. Already, it has downloaded all the dependency, guys. It has downloaded all the dependencies. That's what it is making it very fast. 
and after that what happened right it will try to create a target directory see it has created target directory now assume that if i'm doing a cleaning if i'm doing mvn clean see the whole target 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 directory will be deleted see it will remove the target directory it will clean up it will remove the target directory see it will remove see deleting the target directory if you do an ls see the target directory is not there now i will do an mvn compile see it will try to download the whole project or the whole dependency it will try to download and then what happened right it will try to create a target directory see like that now the target directory is created now if you go to the target directory under that you have a dot class directory under that all the class files are getting created here see here what i told you here in your convention right so and all the compiled codes right it will always get in sit under target directory there will be a class directory will get created under that you all the dot class files are there like this here now suppose assume that here okay good thing is that so you are saying that rajesh rajesh under src under main under java you are having only one file main dot uh, suppose i want to add some more files suppose i want to add some more files like for example vi i'll just say learning dot java this is one more source code something you don't to worry all these things what is it class learning flot float of something course id something okay. this is the source code which i have written so this is a separate file learning.java okay don't worry now come out from here come out from here come out from here where is the pom.xml file okay there you sit and run an mvn compile see So even that learning dot java uh, java right even that also got compiled along with the main dot java learning dot also compiled see under the target under the target you see that there is a class directory is there under classes you could see the learning dot java this has compiled and it has come over here okay with me that rajesh whatever you are creating the uh, you know like the sources actually even the sources are also compiled along with your main dot java correct guys along with your main dot java like for example if you go to the src correct guys correct no so under the src main java see you have two files you can even create one more file something training dot java you can create as many as, as you want class training what is it int course id something see now save this file come out from here come out from here come out from here yes run mm and compile see guys now it has build even see if you go to the target and if you go to the classes and if you see even trainer dot class has created see so you it's not only one file you can have hundreds of file the maven will build all the files whatever it is there under source main java under this path right whatever the files are there it will compile everything this is what the beauty of our maven under this main java see you have multiple source files are there dot java files are there or it will compile each and every compile it will try to keep all the compiled dot class files under the target class directory under this target classes directory here it will keep all the dot class files am i clear on this sir till here so guys i hope that you have understood today this is a very basic thing which cover we cover today in the upcoming sessions we will see many more things in the maven actually okay so guys i think i'll i'll stop it today right and tomorrow we will uh, tomorrow means the next session we will continue right from the maven itself we will we will continue from the maven course so in the next session next session we will install the maven using second method that is through source method and we need to understand about maven goals then we need to understand about what are super pom okay 
and also we will we will write jenkins job to do the code pull from git and use the maven to build the code so we will be writing a small small uh, you know jenkins job now where you will pull the code from the github and then compile it by calling a maven and all so how to configure maven and all in jenkins server we will be seeing in the next session okay sure guys chalo then that's all for the day today if you have any doubts let me know or else we'll wind up the session okay sure thank you all guys thank you bye great session sir great thank session you. Yeah. thank you bye yeah thank you